What's up guys, Paul Salmon here. Well, I got the 150 back home and it didn't even quit one time on the whole way back. And we'll talk about what we did to fix it. That's coming up next. Okay, for those of you that watch the channel, you'll know that about a month and a half ago, had an issue with the 150. I was taken off from Decatur, Illinois, and the thing quit on me a total of three times. Ended up uh, ultimately just leaving the aircraft at Decatur, and uh, Gatrol's Aviation there at, uh, at Decatur uh, went ahead and pulled the carburetor off of it, sent the carburetor in, and had the carburetor rebuilt. Unfortunately, I didn't get to talk to the guy that actually did the rebuild on the carburetor. He'd love to have an obvious smoking gun, you know, the float was screwed up, this was screwed up, that was screwed up, whatever. But I uh, ultimately didn't get to do that, but had a brand new, fresh, rebuilt carburetor. He put it back on. Uh, actually, we'll pull the uh, fuel line off at the level of the carburetor and let the fuel run in to a five-gallon bucket, and he said it rang like gangbuster, just filled the bucket up. So we're pretty sure we didn't have any fuel flow occlusion or narrowing or that sort of thing going on, venting problem and all that. So I was ready to take the aircraft home. So I'd like to talk about why I did what I did on takeoff to try to minimize risk just on the outside chance that this thing would quit on me again. So let's go to, uh, let's go to video here and I'll talk about that. So here we are at Decatur. Uh, this is an aerial view off Google Earth of uh, Decatur Airport. And you can see that uh, <clears throat> we have two runways here, basically. Uh, That's runway 1836, actually three, but one, uh, 1836 here. Winds on that day that I left out were uh, zero, 010 zero to on, on about 12 knots or so. So I could take off on 36 this direction. That was definitely not preferable because if you took off on 36 here and you got out to about right here, and you know you're, they're going to put you on left downwind, and you got out in here and you lost the engine. You got very few options. You know, you could try the impossible turn to get back to the to the runway, or even this this uh, runway here, or try for the golf course here or whatever. But for the most part, you're going to be out over town. Anyway, you're going to be over town, and that's just not a good option if you lose the engine. So what I did was here's uh, runway six, uh, and even though winds were zero one zero at about twelve, that's not too big of a crosswind. So I elected to take off on this runway, and you know you got a much longer runway. This runway is about seven thousand feet long or so, and so if the thing did quit on me, I could try to get it back to the runway. And if I had climbed out enough where I couldn't get back to the runway, I was going to have to go out in the open farm fields. There's a lot of them out here on this entire direction here. Lots of open farm fields. So now I could scroll out here just a little bit and show you that once I got on the way, so I climbed out, I took off in this direction, got out to about here and turned south. And then as you can see, this entire run down through here is all open farm fields with plenty of options if you lose the engine. And Decatur Tower, um, Cessna 61286. That's a 62816 Decatur Tower. 61286 on a ramp here at Gatros. I'd actually like to depart on runway six as I got more runway there. This is the one that quit on me three times about a month ago, so a little extra runway might be an advantage. That's a 61286, roger that, runway six, taxi alpha. Head to uh, runway six for 979 Romeo Mike Roger, unable to issue departure clearance, departure will be at your own risk. Use caution for a minute equipment. Decatur winds uh, 040 at 10, altimeter 3001. Departing at uh, own risk, Romeo Mike. And 61286, holding short here, ready to go runway 6, and we'll be uh, out to the east initially and then a south turn. So this is 61286, cross 936, runway 6, quick takeoff. Clear to go, runway 6 for 286. All right, boys, here we go. It's going to be a pretty good crosswind.
Okay, so rather than bore you guys to tears, I made it home. The engine didn't quit on me again. And I could have sort of leapfrogged on my way home by Vandalia and Shelbyville. And I kind of leapfrogged from airport to airport just in case the thing, um, you know, gave me any trouble. I had to make an, a landing. I could likely get to an airport and, and set the thing down. But I'd like to talk to you guys about something. Uh, the last time that uh, this happened, the last videos that I made where I actually lost the engine, I really made the point that when the engine quits, you have got to immediately lower that nose, immediately lower the nose. You can't wait. You can't wait. Even just a few seconds can get you in trouble, okay? So I'm going to show you a video of a gentleman that was taken off in a Howard DGA, a nice, uh, very nice airplane. And you can hear the engine quit on takeoff, and he delayed just a matter of just a few seconds on getting the nose down. Now, he did take off at quite a high nose attitude, and uh, which is worse. That's another thing that I mentioned was when you take off, don't try to get that nose trimmed way up. You know, if the engine quits, your airspeed is going to rapidly degrade if you don't get that nose down. So in this case, uh, he lost the engine. You can hear it quit. Um, the airspeed rapidly degraded because he didn't rapidly lower the nose down. And by the time he made it back down to the runway. His airspeed was so slow that he had uh, not much in the way of kinetic energy. Now, he didn't stall, but when he got down to the flare, he just did not have the energy to flare the aircraft and stop, and he ended up pancaking into the runway. And unfortunately, the aircraft um, was consumed by a post-crash fire. Now, the good part is the, neither one of the people on board the aircraft were injured. Uh, they got out okay, but let me show you what that looks like here. I doubt if there's any wake vortices left out there. So like I say, the uh, good part about that crash, if there is a good part about it, is both people walked away from it with no significant injuries. But believe me, guys, when that engine quits, you have got to get the nose down. You've got to immediately lower that nose, preserve airspeed, preserve kinetic energy so that at the flare you've got enough energy to stop the aircraft and you don't pancake into the runway or the field or wherever you're going into. So, Well, I hope you liked the video, and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next video. And remember, get the damn nose down if the engine quits.